it's just me, Jess. I want to talk about humility, the power of humility in shining as a light. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Humility has a lot to do with that. The scripture says, if you humble yourself, He, like the Lord, will exalt you. What's the difference between a person that's trying to shine like a light by doing good works and a person who is actually shining from the inside out? I believe the difference here is humility. Philippians 2, 3, and then some verses after says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Pride, right? Be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Here's the attitude. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus humbled himself, and the Father exalted him. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. God is giving us the power to live a life that is pleasing to Him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. There's something about humility and approaching God and humility with full dependence on God that allows us to live in His presence, to experience the joy of His presence, to experience the satisfaction of His approval. Um, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. You know, pride and insecurity tend to go hand in hand. A person who is very insecure is typically also very prideful. People who are truly humble, who have humbled themselves before God, come out very confident. <laughs> I, I'm confident because I don't rely on myself to do what God has asked me to do. I have humbled myself. I'm in a place where I'm fully dependent on God to help me do everything and anything. And I am confident because I trust in Him. Numbers 12 verse 3 says, Now the man Moses was very meek, more than all the people who were on the face of the earth. We see in Exodus 34 that Moses would have fellowship with God face to face. And after he came down from the mountain, his face was glowing. Like literally, his face was glowing. And the children of Israel freaked out. They're like, oh my gosh. All right, 2 Corinthians 3 says, We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. So the Lord did not want the people to see that the glory was fading away from Moses' face. So he wore a veil over his face in front of the children of Israel. But when Moses got before the Lord, he took the veil off again. 
Let's see what the scripture has to say about that. Exodus 34, I think. When Moses came down Mount Sinai carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken to the Lord. So when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to them and asked Aaron and all the leaders of the community to come over. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. But whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with the Lord, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people the instructions the Lord had given him. And the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. So he would put the veil over his face until he returned to speak with the Lord. Well, I've heard two testimonies. In humility, they encounter God's presence and then they go out to do ministry and their face physically shines and glows. One is Nathaniel Oliveri. He was at a cousin's funeral or something, and he started to preach the gospel at the funeral, and his light, just, his face shined like a light. And everybody was like, oh, and they got it on video. Really cool, right? The second person is Eric Gilmore. Eric Gilmore shared this testimony. It's Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? It's good. I'm filming a video. Okay. Um, okay but, well, but I figured it out. Okay, sounds good. See you later. Okay, bye. Bye. The second person whose testimony I've heard is Eric Gilmore. Um, I think he said he had 10 days to himself and he just soaked in God's presence. And then on the 10th day, um, it was time for him to go to the local prison to minister. So he went to the jail to to tell people about Jesus and um, he said he usually goes in there and he says hey who wants to hear about Jesus and the prisoners have like their inmates like they haven't had the best lives obviously there's anger and hurt there so people manifest the enemy and they say things like F you and I don't want to be here and get out of here we don't care what you have to say but some people would come and listen to him share but this time after he had been in the presence of the Lord for 10 days, he showed up, he went in, and he just started worshiping Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you, love you, love you. Pretty soon his time was up. Before you know it, it's up. When Eric was done preaching in the prison that day, before he left, everybody, everybody's faces were on the ground. Everybody was worshiping the Lord. Their faces on the ground. And he's like, oh, that was an hour, two hours, whatever. That went by fast. And then he turns around and he walks out and he leaves. Two weeks later, Eric is doing ministry on the street somewhere with some homeless people. And this guy runs up to him and says, you're the kid. You're the kid. And Eric's like, me? I myself have kids. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What do you mean I'm the kid? And this guy runs up and says, you don't know, do you? And he's like, no, what's up? He's like, did you do prison ministry at that jail? down the street like three weeks ago and Eric says yeah and he's like oh my gosh you don't even know you started worshiping the Lord and your face shined like a bright light when we humble ourselves before God he exalts us and we have confidence before man when I am confident in the Lord I cannot fail because I don't put an expectation on myself I'm constantly looking to Jesus in humility saying, God, I can't have faith to pray for the sick without you. I can't have faith to love the people in front of me without your help. Have you ever encountered a situation where you needed great faith and you didn't have enough faith? And you're like, God, uh, I wish I would have been fasting last week. It was too late. Five wise virgins and five foolish virgins went to meet the bridegroom, right? And when the alarms were sounding, the bridegroom is coming, the bridegroom is coming, the five foolish virgins ran out of oil. They had to go get some and come back. But they missed the wedding feast. They missed the wedding feast because they didn't have oil in their lamps. Their lamps were not burning. 
When we encounter a situation where we're lacking in the fruit of the Spirit, when I'm encountering a situation where I don't have enough patience for somebody, I don't have enough faith, I don't have enough love, that's likened to not having enough oil in my lamp. The five foolish virgins and five wise virgins were still virgins. They were all virgins. <laughs> They'd all been cleansed from the idolatry of the world. But some were wise and some were foolish. The wise virgins always had oil in their lamps. A wise bride loves her bridegroom, spends time in the presence, has oil in her lamp so she always shines bright for her king. Psalm 63 says, Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory face to face. <laughs> your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting my hands up to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. With songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. God would not tell us about all the amazing things that we're supposed to do in here, expect us to reach that standard and then not empower us to do those things. I'm not supposed to shine brightly as a light without oil in my lamp. You know, I feel like I tell people this. Throw away your idols. Get humble with God. Get real with God. What does that look like? Forsaking all others for Jesus exclusively. Anything can be an idol. We can be proud about anything. Our heritage, our nationality, our ministry, our denomination, our theology. James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Okay. Now I'm gonna speak practically on how to humble yourself in the presence of God. The first thing we need to do is ask God for a pure motive. God, I want to love you more than anything else. I want to want you more than anything else. I want to desire your face, not just your hand. Okay, scripture also, the scripture says in, in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed from one degree of glory to the next just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Beholding His face transforms us from glory to glory. With unveiled face, just like Moses. The second thing you should do is that if you're struggling with sin, ask God to help you. Don't try to muster up faith in the moment or muster up forgiveness if you're having trouble forgiving somebody. You saying with your mouth, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. That's striving, it's trying to do something in your own strength. But in humility, saying, God, God, I need your help with this idolatry. God, I love Facebook more than I love spending time with you. God, I love watching this movie more than I love you. Help me, help me. That's humility. Let's say a three-year-old spills ice cream, chocolate ice cream on themselves. They have ice cream on their hands. And they can grab a tissue and try real hard to clean it up. But because there's ice cream on their hands, 
They're just spreading ice cream everywhere and they're getting themselves even more dirty. When they go to daddy, uh, daddy, I'm icky. He gets a wet wipe, cleans us up, maybe throws the shirt in the washer, gives us some new clothes so that we feel confident. But he does it. We can't clean ourselves up. But in humility, we can let go of our idols and ask God for help. I had a crush on this guy. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> right? Um, and I kept trying to push him out. <sighs> like, I'm not thinking like that. He's my brother. He's my brother. He's my brother. He's my brother. But it didn't work. I was still attracted to him. I mean, for holy reasons, obviously. I'm never looking at that booty like, you know, like, I don't think like that anymore. I'm redeemed. I see godly character in a person, and godly character is very attractive. So anyway, I ask God, instead of me striving and trying to push this away, that was me doing things in my own strength. And I humbled myself before God and said, yeah, God, it's true. I have a crush and I don't like, I don't like that I feel this way. My eyes aren't looking at you. They're looking at him and you. Jesus, I need you to help me. When I came to God in humility with my problem, he exalted me and he healed my heart too. Because in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So when I seek God in humility, he cleanses me of all unrighteousness. So humility is admitting our faults before God and allowing him to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Three, be still and know that God, that he is. Right? The, the, the scripture says anyone who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you do those things, God's presence will come because he loves it when we humble ourselves before him. He loves it when we ask for his help. He loves it when we need him. Like a little kid who has ice cream all over them and says, Daddy, Daddy, help is our superhero. Daddy wants to be our superhero. Save the day and help us.